Let's talk about evolution by natural selection, which was a mechanism proposed by Charles Darwin versus evolution by inheritance of acquired characteristics, which was a mechanism for evolution devised by Jean-Baptiste Lamarck. Jean-Baptiste Lamarck was the first person, first scientist to suggest theory of evolution. So he usually gets mentioned based on what he got wrong, not what he got correct. So what he did get correct was uh, suggesting that organisms uh, change over time and um, evolution is responsible for organisms changing over time. But the mechanism that he suggested wasn't quite correct. The mechanism he suggested was inheritance of acquired characteristic and it is kind of shown uh, represented by the picture of these giraffes changing over time. So what Lamarck believed was that during the lifetime of a giraffe, um, a giraffe wanted to gain competition with respect to access to food so it kept stretching its neck to reach the trees. And when it stretched its neck during the lifetime of, let's say, this giraffe, the neck got longer, and that longer neck was inherited by the next generation. And then the next generation kept stretching its neck, and during its lifetime, it, the next generation of graph developed even a longer neck, which then was inherited by the next generation. So these changes during their lifetime in response to their environment um, led to changes which was passed on to the next generation. That's why it's called inheritance of acquired characteristic. An organism would acquire certain characteristic during its lifetime, which changes its characteristics during its lifetime, and then that characteristics is passed on to the next generation. So this, the way he described it, it suggests that evolution uh, or uh, adaptation to an environment is an active um, response to changes in the environment. So an organism wants to adapt to an environment, change in the environment, therefore it changes during its lifetime and then passes that on. And that is the wrong mechanism. These scientists, well, first Charles Darwin, then Alfred Wallace, they proposed the correct mechanism. So evolution by natural selection says evolutionary process in which individuals who happen to possess characteristics which help them adapt to the environment contribute more offspring to the next generation. So if we're going to discuss this with respect to the giraffes, according to evolution by natural selection, the idea is the mechanism is that you have a population of giraffes and within that population, some of the giraffes in that population have a longer neck other than others. Now, because those individuals who already have a longer neck, somewhat longer neck, they have an advantage with respect to other giraffes. They gain access to a source of food that other giraffes in the population do not have. Therefore, they gain a survival advantage, and because they can eat better and survive better, they can contribute more offspring and send their variation, that change that they already have, to the next population. So it's not a conscious effort by the organism. That modification is already there in the organism. Now contrast that to the one that Lamarck proposed, which says evolutionary process in which individuals develop new characteristics during their lifetime to help them adapt to the environment. And then that acquired characteristics will then be passed on to the next generation. And this is wrong. That's not what happens. So um, Darwin argued that natural selection is an inevitable outcome of three principles operating in nature. One, most characteristics of organisms are inherited or passed from parent to offspring. Second, within a population, and this is really this population word is important, when we talk about natural selection and we talk about evolution, we're always talking about um, 
organisms in the context of a population, not individual organisms. So what is population? It's a group of organisms of the same species which can uh, mate with one another and produce fertile offspring. So within a population, offspring vary among each other in regards to their characteristics. And those variations are inherited. So the, if you look at a population of organisms, there's already variation within the members of the population. Now, because resources are limited within a population, offspring with characteristics most suited for the environment will survive and reproduce. So it is, so the important thing is that if we have a population, there are individuals that already have different characteristics and the ones that have characteristics that help them survive better in the environment, they will gain a survival and reproduction advantage. So therefore, for natural selection to have her happen, there has to be variation already present among members of the population. So when we say organisms adapt, that doesn't mean that they purposefully change their characteristics within their lifetime to adapt. No, variation already has to exist. That variation has to be heritable. So for example, if you decide that you don't like your hair color and then you change your hair color, that change of hair color is not gonna be transferred to your next generation. So if you exercise and makes you healthier and you live a better life, that bigger muscles and uh, your, health, your health isn't really transferred to the next generation because it's not heritable. Your big muscles that you generate because of lifting weights is not heritable. Then the variation must provide a survival and reproduction advantage. So you can have various different characteristics that you have, but if you have a different characteristic in a population, but it doesn't really give you a survival or reproduction advantage, that doesn't really work into um, natural selection or allowing the population to evolve. So uh, here's a discussion. Among these uh, characteristics that we have within a human population, speed reading skills, ability to read faster, uh, number of eyes, and then color blindness. Uh, which of these do you think are variations, because these are variations in, within a human population, is that going, are these variations going to allow a human population to evolve? So, um, one of the um, sources of important information for developing the evolution by natural selection concepts was studying birds on a series of islands called Galapagos Islands. Um, Darwin studied these birds really, really closely. They, uh, he looked at various populations of these birds. They're in the Galapagos Islands. There are multiple different islands. Each of them have their own um, climates and sources of food and etc. And each of these islands have the population of what's called these birds called finches. And what uh, Darwin noticed was that not only within the same population on one island, there's variations um, in the characteristics of birds, but also he saw that these birds, although they have similar characteristics when you compare one island to the next, but they're also, there are some characteristics that are really different, which is specific to that environment. So, um, that um, variation within the same population of finches and also comparing different populations on different islands was really a big revelation uh, for Darwin. Now, the same observations was made by this couple uh, who are naturalists. They are scientists who, um, heard their name is Peter and Rosemary Grant, and they basically uh, con um, repeated Darwin's experiments over a 40-year period and their observations basically uh, 
showed Darwin's uh, conclusions. So it was really consistent with Darwin's conclusions. So I'm going to leave a link to the video uh, for you to watch it. Um, once you watch this video, I would like you to uh, write down what your interpretation of these two graphs of and how what you see in these graphs are related to evolution by natural selection.